In today's video, we're going to be painting up an axe beak from Reaper Miniatures. Okay, so I'm going to be doing something a little bit different here than I usually would do. What I've got is I've got some sand here from outside my driveway, and I've just placed some uh, PVA glue on here, and I'm going to be covering up the base. Now, the reason why I'm starting off with this now rather than I usually do the basing uh, after I've painted the full miniature, is since I'm using... Uh, the sand from my driveway i want to prime it all at the same time so the easiest thing to do and wait for that glue to dry is to place it on now before we uh, get any paint onto there so that's why we're starting off with uh, placing the basing on first okay so now that we've got that done and i've what i've done here now i've just primed it all up and it's just an, a, a white primer and what we're going to do now is we're going to start off with some ultramarine blue to paint off our axe beak and we're going to be uh, Focusing on all these top feathers and I'm going to be leaving just a little bit of space here on his uh, Just under his neck towards his uh, belly region and we're just going to be leaving that uh, for a different color As well as just trying to avoid some of the areas around his eyes as well. I'm going to be painting that up a different color, too I uh, decided to go with a uh, ultramarine blue here. I want to go with a nice uh, bright and vibrant uh, sort of uh, paradise bird sort of color um, just something really lively something a little bit different from what I'd usually do because usually I'd stick to sort of either a brown or a gray keeping it very uh, neutral but this one I'm going to go with a very bright and out there color scheme so now we have all that blue painted up and dry what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come on now with a crystal blue and we're going to be dry brushing this over top to catch all that nice uh, feather detail on there and really uh, emphasize that up where the light would be hitting on this uh, axe beak here so making sure you give a good coverage especially paying a lot of attention to the top areas but don't forget to go over everywhere so you can pick out all those little details as well so just a nice easy step to get those highlights on there uh, before we get too far into the miniature with some of the other details that we're going to be doing okay so once we've dry brushed some blue on what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with just that same blue and i'm just going to be getting in those feather areas here just on the back of his neck as you can see so um, i'm just separating them out because i want them to be a little bit lighter if you want to make them even lighter again you might want to add just a little bit of white to it so it can really pop it's a little bit hard to see here um, but there is actually a big separation in the colors there it's a lot uh, brighter blue on the feathers i'm painting up just now uh, because we've gone underneath with that uh, ultramarine blue it's a little bit hard to see on camera but it is a lot lighter blue Okay, so now we have all that blue painted up. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some demonic yellow. I'm going to be using the demonic yellow to be painting up our legs of our axe beak here. So just paying a little bit of attention, being careful from where we want that uh, blue and yellow to mingle together. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, it can be, uh, I think it'd be a little bit interesting having a, just a teeny bit of green there where it's mixed together. Um, but I'm not trying to focus on that too much because I, I want there to be a separation and I don't want the colors mixing too much but having just a little bit of mix of color in there uh, I think it'll be a good thing for a bit of a transition into those legs so just making sure we're giving them a good coat so once we have the legs all painted up what we're going to be doing now is we're going to move on with some ivory and with the ivory what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting that area just underneath the neck and the belly of our axe beak here now going to take a couple of layers to cover this over since we're covering over blue with white um, so don't be afraid if you can't get it uh, on the complete first pass of the painting and what I'm also going to be doing here is just sort of feathering the edges here so just basically what I'm doing is flattening out my brush from painting it and then just using the uh, the tip of my brush since it's all flayed out at the moment and just dabbing it along the edge slightly to give that uh, but more nicer transition to make it look a bit more like feathers than one hard color to another so now we have all the white part completed and painted up we're going to come in now with some lava orange and this is the part where i said we want to be avoiding the uh, eye region rather than painting the whole thing over blue as i'm going to be giving it this uh, nice bright orange uh, color here to really make it pop out so you can really focus on those uh, eyes on the miniature um, now it's going to take a couple of coats of this um, orange i got here is quite thin so I'm going to have to go over it uh, a few times, just paying attention. And what I'm going to do is uh, spread out just over to the beak a little bit so I can get a little bit of the ridge line uh, along between the beak and the head. So just giving them a nice coverage over the whole area. Okay, so once we have the 
orange parts painted up we're going to come in now with some squid pink from Vallejo and we're going to be using the squid pink to just be painting up the tongue of our axe beak here so just a nice easy coverage here the squid pink covers up really nicely over the white paint um, so just giving it a good cover make sure you go right down into the miniature there as you can see it goes quite a long way down so don't forget to do that as well okay so now we've got that dry what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some basalt gray which is a very uh dark gray almost towards the black and we're going to be using this for our axe beaks uh, main beak here as well as all the claws and talons over the miniature so it's not quite a hard black and it's uh not quite a gray it's a really good uh, in between here that i think would go well with this miniature so giving it a nice coverage don't forget to do uh, inside the beak as well and all the little claws that he has he has some on his wings here and also on his feet as well making sure we give a good coverage of the uh, basalt gray to really uh give it a lighter tone because i didn't want to go quite with the black i think it might have been just a little bit too harsh with the black so that's why i've gone with a very dark gray okay so once we have our beak and our claws all painted up what we're going to do now is come in with some oak brown i'm going to be using oak brown to of course be painting up the base now i have watered this uh, brown down uh, quite a bit because i really want it to get into those uh cracks and uh, recesses in the little base that we have on here i watered it down a lot more than i usually water it down my paints usually i just put one or two drops in my paint when i'm painting but this one i've sort of gone for nearly a 50 50 mix so i really wanted to get it in between those areas of all the little stones and rocks we have there on the base so it's a good tip for getting into those really uh, deep areas of the miniature okay so once we have the base painted up what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some red tone and what we're going to be doing is the red tone for is we're going to be using it to uh, give a wash over the orange area of a have over our eyes to really deepen those uh, orange colors and give it that more uh, reddish tint and it's really going to make that um vibrancy of the colors really pop out nicely as well as get into those little recesses around the eye so it can define the eye a little bit more okay so once that red wash has completely dried we're going to come in now with some blue tone and we're going to be using blue tone of course to be uh, deepening all those colors on our uh, axe beak that we have here with all that blue area just being careful to avoid the places where we've placed the red tone on and we're giving it a nice uh, good coverage over the area to really bring out all those uh, feather details on here maybe a little bit hard to see but it actually does have um, some nice feather sculpt details in there and I think the uh, blue wash is really gonna bring all that out and really keep those colors in there that's why I'm doing that rather than using a brown wash which I'd usually do for an animal just sort of give it a quick brown wash and be done with it but I really want this uh, axe beak to really stand out like one of those uh, bright colors of uh, birds that they have sort of like a cassowary or something like that where the, the colors are super super bright so that's why we're going over with the blue tone here okay so now we have the blue tone complete and dried what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some agrax earth shade and we're using the agrax earth shade to be covering over the entire base giving it a nice um deepened effect to really get into those recesses that we've gotten into with our brown paint as well as that we're also going to be painting up the um or I should say washing over rather than painting up uh, the legs of our uh, axe beak here as well to give some of that uh, nice worn in definition with the miniatures um, so that it looks like the axe beak's been running around on the uh, the ground there and the floor dirtied itself up as well as it uh, separated out from all the bright feathers as well give it that uh, more hardened look so it looks like it runs around all the time okay so now that wash on the base is complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some known oil i'm going to be using the known oil to be going over all the um the beaks and the claws there everywhere that we did in the um the basalt gray so this is going to be uh, good now since i knew i was coming over with a wash anyway it's going to darken down that gray color we have already just that little bit further so i didn't bother so much about the black so just a nice way to deepen all those colors down just a little bit more okay so once all the washes are dry when i come in now with just some Vallejo black and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting in the eye now so I want to do all the washes and stuff of that before we could uh, get to the eye because I didn't want to um, change the tone of that either with the red wash or accidentally hitting some of the black wash over there um, so that's why I just wanted to come in with a nice pure black no wash over it so it's going to really stand out amongst all these uh, bits because even if I went over the black with a known oil it would just dull 
some of the shininess of this black down just a little bit and I didn't want that so that's why we've just come in with straight black here on the eyes. Okay so once we have the eyes painted in what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some leather brown and we're going to be using the leather brown to just dry brush over our uh, nice ground coverage that we have here. So just grabbed a simple dry brush now I've just used a, a cheap makeup brush to do this so I'm not worried about destroying my brushes here. Also it makes a pretty good dry brush uh, especially if you want a soft dry brush. And I'll just grab the leather brown and placing it on here to vary up all those colors on the base. Okay, so now we have the base highlighted. What we're going to be doing now is coming in with some of our past colors, such as the, our uh, basalt gray, our orange, and our yellows, even our blues. And we're going to be coming back to just do some highlighting here. So I've just grabbed our orange that we had before, and I'm just coming up to the eyebrow of our axe beak and giving just a small layer on the top of his eye so it looks like the light's coming down and hitting the eye we get that little bit of highlight there and it's going to make it pop against uh, the one part that we've already given a wash over as well as also the feet here I'm just picking out the little ridges as you can see here on the feet to really highlight them up um, make them stand out a little bit so we've got that brown wash over it and it's going to make it look a lot more like the lights hitting it as well so just doing little bits like this can really uh, up the miniatures quality a lot by just doing simple little pieces like that. And of course adding to the simple bits like that as well, we're just going to come in now with our basalt grey and just hit the edges of the beak so it sort of looks like uh, the light shining off the beak making it look a little bit extra sharp and pointy as well. So just some cool little tricks there to help uh, up the miniatures level. Uh, a lot more I'm, I'm working on doing a lot more highlighting because i know i i haven't done that much in the past so i'm still learning and really hoping i can get the hang of this because uh, i think it gives off uh, great effects with the miniatures okay so once we have that done basically our miniature is now complete but what i'm going to be doing is enhancing the base by adding in some uh, grass tufts some flowers and um, static grass all things like that to really uh enhance our miniatures base make it look like it's running through sort of like a, a jungle scene or something i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do yet um but you may just want to leave the miniature right here and it'd be completely fine and done but i want to take it to that next level and really make it pop And with that we're finished by painting up our axe beak from reaper miniatures and you can see by uh giving it those bright and vibrant colors as well as our scenery that we have placed out here we've made it actually really stand out quite a bit on the table and it's really going to pop uh, than if i had it just stuck to the normal thing i would have done which is maybe make it more look like an ostrich or an emu or something like that but i think Going with those uh, bright birds of paradise and those cassowaries and stuff. It's really going to be an eye-catching piece on the table. So I hope this video has been helpful. Whether you want to paint up this miniature yourself. Or you just enjoy me painting up miniatures as well. And I just want to thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video.